Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Jerry Knevy. I come from a small village called uh, Uchtarayard, about a half hour's drive from here. I don't have any background in politics, but um, I'm delighted at the emergence of the National Party because I'm appalled by what's been happening to this country for the past 20 years or so. So uh, at last I find there's a party that can articulate my views and the views of a hell of a lot of other Irish people who maybe aren't very vocal and don't kick up a b big fuss about things, but who have strongly held views and um, at long last those people have a party that can represent them. So the National Party, what it stands for and what it is endeavouring to do. To me it stands for the defence, the protection, the protection and the flourishing of the Irish nation and its people. People who are Irish seed, breed and generation. Going back to the Middle Ages and beyond, Irish monks and scholars travelled the European mainland, building schools and monasteries, educating and civilising European peoples, many of whom were little more than barbarians. That Irish legacy still exists in many parts of the continent. In more recent times, Irish immigrants made a massive contribution towards developing the United States into the world's greatest superpower. Irish soldiers of all ranks played huge roles and won everlasting fa fame in conflicts worldwide, including two world wars. Just a century ago, a few thousand Irish men and women took on the might of the greatest empire the world has ever known, won freedom for most of the country and in the process sow the seeds for the destruction of the seemingly invincible British Empire. In every field of endeavour, from medical to military, from construction to entertainment, from art and literature to sport, the Irish have achieved to an extent far in excess of what a nation with such a small population could expect to achieve. We have punched well above our weight. Nevertheless, in recent years, we have been continuously and relentlessly bombarded, both from within and without, with a propaganda onslaught centred on a basic theme, i.e. we are not a modern, progressive, cosmopolitan country or society unless we become diverse and multicultural. The message being driven home is that until this is done, we will, the Irish people that is, will remain some somehow incomplete, backward and stunted, as, both as a people and as a country. There is a massive, ruthless campaign throughout Europe to undermine and destroy all forms of nationalism, which is constantly portrayed as being outdated, backward, negative and dangerous. Internationalism, globalism and multiculturalism are the new religions. We are, in effect, being bullied into diminishing our nation, our heritage, our culture, our achievements, our ancestors and ourselves. One aspect of the whole issue that enrages me most is that a concerted attempt is being made to bully us out of our right to put forward a case for the defence and the protection of our nation, our people and our heritage. This exercise in suppression is being conducted by the majority of the political establishment with the support of their allies in academic circles, the media, and an arrogant, self-appointed liberal elite obsessed by their own importance. The attempts to prevent expression of national sentiments range from media censorship, the use of derision and cheap sneers, accusations of racism and xenophobia, right through to threats and physical violence. It goes without saying that decent patriotic Irish people have every right and indeed every duty to defend what they hold sacred. This is especially so in light of the abject failure of the, collect the collection of contemptible cute whores, messenger boys and lackeys that comprise the current Irish political establishment and their failure to, do so, to mount any such defence. <coughs> the main driver of the internationalist multicultural campaign is of course the EU that increasingly dictatorial and sinister empire which is bearing an ever-increasing ever resemblance to the old Soviet Union, 
in the way it tramples on the legitimate rights and freedoms of small countries. Think back to the reruns of both the Nice and Lisbon referendums. Unfortunately, the EU has far too many homegrown collaborators. This can be partly explained by the fact that, sadly, after a century of at least partial independence, the old slave mentality engendered by seven centuries of colonisation is still alive in many quarters. This is the mentality that tells us that as a people we are inadequate when dependent on ourselves alone and that in order to flourish we must always have the help of outside influence. This mentality is clearly manifested in the manner in which Irish politicians and others practically swoon with joy upon receiving an occasional word of praise or an occasional pat on the head from their European masters. It needs to be said here that the EU are not the only ones behind the internationalist agenda. There are many powerful figures from the global finance scene on board as well, but the EU are the most powerful threat to Ireland. If their, if their campaigns succeed, that is the EU and the um, internationalists, if their campaigns succeed and the fabric and structure of the Irish nation is destroyed, what will we be left with? Well, we will have to resign ourselves to being a small, peripheral, insignificant province of a powerful, controlling EU empire. A helpless, powerless pawn to be used and manipulated at the whim of our powerful masters in Brussels, Berlin and elsewhere. We will have to accept the decrees they impose on us, including those on issues like abortion and homosexuality, etc., which prioritise the unnatural over the natural, and decadence over wholesomeness. They will in, this will ensure that we will become fully immersed in the moral cesspit that results from implementing the so-called liberal progressive agenda, which is already the norm in much of Europe. If this campaign succeeds, we will still be able to get up in the morning, we will be able to eat and drink and go about our daily business. With a bit of luck, and if we play our cards right, we might still get an occasional pat on the back from our masters in Brussels and elsewhere. But if our nation is vanquished, our remaining freedom, independence and pride is gone, we will have lost something priceless and we will have lost it forever. The battle faced by the National Party in order to prevent this will not be a short battle, nor will it be an easy battle. But it is a battle well worth fighting and it is a battle well worth winning. Thank you.